Welcome to the Ladies Talk Show. This is your host, Leah Richheimer. And I was blasted with emails this last week. Thank you. Everybody wants to know, is there equality in marriage? Is like, what is this? Like what I'm supposed to do? All the dishes? Stay tuned. We are going to cover that here. So we're going to learn some things. Some of the stuff is unorthodox and some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. You're going to be like, what? Like really? For reals? And then here's the, the, here's the secret. You go home. You try this in your life, you fail, you try again, you fail, you try again, and you're like, you know what? I feel closer to my husband than I ever did. I, my relationships are better. My going through life is better. Why? Not because I'm so smart. It's because we have a masura. There was a guidebook, like you have a dishwasher, and it tells you to put the soap here. If you put the soap where you just felt like putting the soap, the dishes aren't getting cleaned. We have an instruction manual, believe it or not. We have an instruction man manual, and that manual that was given to us by God will tell us exactly what we need to be happy. Again, do not take my word for this. Go try this at home. So the guest we have here today, her name is Tanya. She's been married 11 years. She's got three kids. We are going to now welcome Tanya to our show. Tanya, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You do sound like the witch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll get used to their voice yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start off. I'd like to hear your um, take. Can there be such thing as equality in a marriage? And I want to say that I, I don't, that's not at all where I'm coming from. I don't think that things should be equal. That if, you know, I cook one meal, the next night he should cook another meal or he should ever cook a meal. Like, that's, it's not at all about equality for me. And I don't think that it's a healthy thing to count who's doing what and try to make it equal. So I just want to clarify that. I don't know if that's what you thought that I was asking or if that's what yeah, some great. of the other emails that you got. Perfect. Were. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yes, a lot of the emails were talking about that equality, and a lot of them talked about partnership. And, okay. you know, I, I, and I have some interesting thoughts that we'll share uh, as we go along here. Okay, go, so go ahead. That's okay. good. Thank you so for clarifying. Here's, here's like the piece that I'm really struggling with. So the caller last week, if I remember correctly, she had a baby and she had a baby, mm -hmm. and then she worked as well, right? Right. I think so it was four hours that, a day she worked outside okay. the home. So that and, means that. She's working, and then when she's not working, she's at home with her baby. But when she's at home with her baby, she's working, and she's working very hard. And I don't currently have a baby at home right now, but I've had a few children at home. And I've also had periods where I've worked, and I don't know, at least from my perspective, like being home with a baby is a full-time job, more than a full-time job, because when you're at work, you can, you know, you can – Go to the bathroom if you want to. You can, <laughs> when you're home with a baby, you're you, stuck, right? Right. You so, can get, know, get, like getting lunch much. is a challenge. I got it. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's very hard work being home with kids, at least for me. It is, and I think for most of them, for anyone it is too. So at the end of the day, when my husband comes home from work, right? If I've been home all day, I haven't been, you know, getting a manicure and getting a massage all day. I've been working. And he's also been working, and we've both been working very hard. Mm -hmm. And when he comes home at, home at the end of the day, I can certainly appreciate, and I've really worked on this, like not bombarding him and not asking him to do things. I certainly understand that. But the, the idea that he, he worked, and now he comes home and he's done, and it's my responsibility. So it's like I have to do a double shift, essentially. So I worked all day, he worked all day, and then we're both home. But the kids need baths and bedtime and dinner and, and all the chaos that comes with having children. And for that to be 100% my responsibility, A, it doesn't make sense to me. And B, it, it just feels kind of awful, to be honest. Like, you know, I feel like if he's sitting there and he sees that I'm drowning, I'm trying to, you know, I have one kid during a tantrum and one kid who needs help with homework and, you know, I'm trying to get dinner ready and for him, I mean, he really, really wouldn't do this, but for him to just sit and watch, and I'm supposed to have the perspective that this is what he needs. He needs this downtime to recover. So one, it's like, when do I get that downtime to recover? And two, I don't know. I feel like they're, this is our home. This is These are our children. And I know I'm talking a lot, so I'll wrap up my question. Again, I am not saying that it has to be equal. I'm certainly totally comfortable with him, you know, relaxing for 30 minutes when he comes home or whatever he needs. But the idea that it's now my job 
to do this second shift when, like, do you understand what I'm saying? That that's, mm-hmm. that's my job, and I shouldn't expect that from him. That it's degrading for him to chip in, and it's women's work. I, I don't know. I I have a hard time buying that. Okay, so people who are on Facebook, if that if what Tanya is saying resonates with you, put a, what do they put a heart or th- a thumbs up or uh, something? Yeah, a thumbs up. Because I think she sp- she spoke what all of us are feeling, like beautifully actually. By the way, BT Dubs, good job. But are people are people clicking? Um, yeah, we're we're not not as many as I would think. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we want we because I want to make sure that people are understanding. If you don't understand what you just said, also ask that question because uh, it's very very crucial for Did us. Did I get to... too long winded? No, 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 no. You didn't at all. I think you you explained it very well. So, okay, you you're. Let's just take one thing at a time. Your point about fairness, right? It's a question, like there's part of where you're holding about it that is on principle it bothers you. Like, you know, forget the emotions, let's put, put the emotions aside. Those don't, aren't great either, but let's just look. On principle it bothers you because it's supposed to be a partnership, mm-hmm. Right. So after my call, my uh, the cl- uh, class last week, I had the great merit to speak with Rebetzin Shmuel Kamenetsky, uh, Rav, Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky's wife, the Rosh Hashiva in Phil- from Philadelphia, because I felt like, listen, here's the Armasora. This is what's right. How do I give it over in a way that people can hear it? Right. Because it's, I, I, you know, and, and I went over everything from, the, you know, the, the real highlights of the show last week. I talked for quite some time. I went over the highlights of everything I said. And she said, 100 percent, everything you're saying is correct and follows our Masora. No, you're not making stuff up. No, you're not adding or subtracting. You're, it's right on the nose. Thank God we have the facts. We have the instruction booklet and you're giving it over accurately. You can give, have the best information in the world. If people can't hear it, it means nothing. So I called her to check on myself. I, 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 this is near and dear to my heart, and I feel like it's very, very important for everyone who's listening and for you, Tanya, on the phone, and for all of Klai Israel and, uh, you know, and, and the nations uh, w- with us that to understand what is expected and what is right and what is appropriate and what is the best. Th- this is where a great deal of the conflict in marriage is taking place. And that's why we carried it to another show and are take, taking such, this so seriously because, you know, and the emails we got in, people like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, our marriage would be great if, it, if he would just chip in, All right? So it's a tough, tough place we're holding. So what I, the Rebitson shared, I, I have a lot of notes here, but, but the... Doing something because on principle, and I spoke with a few rabbis also. I again, I want to be, I want to have my ducks lined up. I don't want to come, I, you know, everything I said last week. If you listen to last week's show, there's nothing I said there that wasn't that 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 you know is questionable. So you can go back and listen to that. But what basically what she said, where the problem comes in, is a woman's expectation is causing anger, and anger is an avera. So. A woman has certain expectations. So I said to her, Do you, does Rebitson believe that a woman, when a man comes home, he's worked all day, he should do a diaper? And she said, yes. But the woman should not and cannot and whatever make him do the, di- the diaper. In other words, he should because doing chesed and doing an act of kindness is the way a human being should be. But... For her to expect it or demand it or request it or uh, request it not kindly or whatever, that is incorrect behavior. And the minute she has expectations and then that, that immediately goes to anger and anger is one, of, is one of the worst things that can ever 
that a woman can ever do, that we can do as human beings. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I understand other people get angry, so I, you know, no, but you know, when we get angry, it's like that's we need to do chuva for it every instance. It's not like you sometimes. Well, I threw off the handle, but he deserved it, or I flew, you know, I snapped at him because I had a tough day, and no, every instance we need to gain self mastery. Over the years, you're not born with this. You have to work on it and work on it and, you know, and get to a place where you can be less and less angry over time. So if you're, you know, always getting angry, so be a person that gets angry sometimes. And if you're some person who gets angry at sometimes, you need to be work on never getting angry. So, so work on it. But what she was talking about is a, where the problem in the relationship comes is not from not equality and not from not sharing duties and not from him not doing the chesed he should do it's from the anger very very powerful insight so i asked her you know should a man do a diaper yes if he doesn't woman should not demand it of him or expect it of him and if he does do it that's an act of chesed it's he's not obligated to do that that's just a kindness he's doing for you and this is what Tanya, this could help you the most, is understanding your work in the home is your obligation. His work in the home is his chesed, is his act of kindness. So a woman's going, what? Are you crazy? We both gave birth to this kid. We both, you know, we both decided to have children. We both work full time. So there is a range of scale of how obligated he could or should or might be. If a woman's not working at all, he's zero obligated. It could be if there's two people working, you know, his obligation goes up a little bit. But the bottom line is that expectation that we have of our husband to do what we need them, you know, what we want them to do, that's, mis that's, the, that's the beginning of the mistake is having that expectation and, and feeling that on principle. The other thing that Rebetzin said, which I thought I wanted to share with you that was very, very powerful, partnership is people say partnership. Well, we, he works here. I work there. We, you know, the, I do, I cook this time. She, he, and you're saying you're not demanding that of him, but par partnership would be, okay, he brings in the heavy bottles from the car, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to call partnership. She said, that's an error. Partnership is spiritual in nature. So if you are doing all of the labor in the house and he is, Either he's, you know, he's giving you, um, making you feel confidence in yourself because he's always complimenting you. That would be his partnership. Or he's bringing in the, you know, the bread, the bacon. We don't have bacon around here. Uh, he's bringing in the bread. You know, he's making the bread, and he is, uh, you know, uh, and that's his partnership. But it's a spirit. It's spiritual in nature. You can't can't quantify it. You can't, you know, analyze it. You can't pick it apart. You can't make charts about it. So that is. Um, something very, very crucial to keep in mind that it's a, that's in a spiritual nature. And if you're standing there and you're at the dishes and you're doing your thing and you're annoyed and he's not being a full partner, say, oh, I have no clue what he's bringing into our home. Maybe because your husband is very meticulous in paying tzedakah, he gives 10% of everything you make, and he is, you know, very, very, you know, he, he, he realizes, oh, you know what, oh, I got a check for $100, I forgot to calculate my $10 to give to tzedakah, I'm a, to charity, I feel so terrible, oh my goodness, I'm going to write a check for $20 to be, do, do tshuva for penance, and, the, on, and, the, and the, this is how he, that, that's how he works in the spiritual world. That accrues to your benefit. That brings blessing into your home that can't be measured. That's his part of the partnership that you cannot see. So when you're sitting there doing your hajbun and you're trying to analyze what the, the how do you spend, what's the well, hajbun? Um, Introspection. Calculation, thank you. Oh, Introspection yeah. and calculation, whatever. So when you're tra doing your calculation and trying to measure, you don't have the tools to measure. It's a spiritual thing. You do not. Ha you cannot measure what he's doing for the home. It could be that you that he is um, he he shows up on time all the time, and that gives a grounding to your life. You didn't. You don't even recognize. You don't even appreciate. And what she said, and this is here's one of the most powerful things that she said. Expectations from of your husband is lack of amuna in you, meaning lack. Because you're not appreciating all that he does for you on a spiritual level, 
that causes you to expect from him. So we, that's, she said, anytime you're catching yourself ex- uh, expecting, appreciate. S- bring words out of your mouth. Thank you for bringing the water bottles in. Thank you for earning, thank you for, thank you for working today. I know it was hard for you last night. You were up so late and you had insomnia and whatever, and you still went to work. Thank you. So her whole answer, and a rev I spoke with said that, that he said, if the woman shows appreciation and gets appreciation, she'd be much less upset about her husband helping. Okay, where are we holding now? So I like that. Oh, that sorry, is that you talking? Um, that that feels what? a lot different than that feels a lot different. That feels like something I can wrap my mind around. Um, Which part? Ex- explain explain to our listeners what part it is that you were able to. Which part? Especially the first part, the idea that the expectation and then the anger that that causes is in me, that's the issue. And I, I can totally see that. I can agree with that 100%. Oh, and I forgot to tell you what she said. The other thing she said is I asked her, I said, so a man should do a diaper? And he's like, he should, but she shouldn't expect it. I said, should a, so a man should come home. He's worked all day. The wife doesn't work. He comes home. Should he do the dishes? He should do the dishes? And she said, absolutely not he shouldn't be cleaning and cooking and housekeeping he should no absolutely not that's your job and he should not be doing that now why is that different than a diaper i was shocked because a diaper is a chesed a kindness to a child and it teaches a child that we that we're a family who does acts of kindness uh, the other doing the dishes and the cleaning up and the whatever, anything he does in that area, in other words, he should do a diaper, even if he doesn't, and you shouldn't tell him to, he has to do a diaper, but and you should be appreciative if he does the diaper, and you shouldn't expect that he does the diaper. But for dishes, you shouldn't expect it, request it, or whatever. Now, if he does it, because you you can ease him into it and train him into it and you know get his help, and the words exactly that she used is... Hold on. Let me just see. Isn't it nice we have people like Rebbitson to turn to? Thank God. She just helped me to give it over in a way. Uh, hold on. Ask nicely. I, you know, your husband comes home or whatever. I know you're tired. I appreciate. The, I'm quoting Rebbitson Kamenetsky exactly. I know you're tired. I appreciate all that you do. If you could just help me with one thing and then give him one thing. And that's it. But that one thing can't be anything in the kitchen or... No, I think it probably could be. I don't think she was saying that. And also, a man should be participating. Unfortunately, in this generation, men have not been, most men have not been raised. They didn't see their fathers helping. They didn't see their, you know, they didn't see the kind of... uh, act of kindness that that they probably should have grown up with and it wasn't certainly in the schools she was, we talked quite a bit about how getting it in the schools now and that's not my avoda if anybody who's listening has the ability or the um uh, uh the the know-how how to incorporate you know make programs for the schools that would incorporate this uh, you know, Rebitson Kamenetsky, I'm sure, would love to help coach you in, or figuring, you know, telling you what she sees is missing and you helping you to develop a program uh, to do it. I'm, I'm volunteering her. Oops. But, but you know, whatever. I'm sure a phone call she wouldn't mind. You know, if there's somebody who's willing to do that, I, I, I would also be willing to help. But whatever. We're, we ha- it is the way it is right now, and this is what we have to deal with, is men who are raised who aren't chipping in 24-7. Now, one of the things that I saw, and this is actually practically brought me to tears i see the women today who are barking orders at their husband like you know oh bring me the diaper bag Uh uh-huh yeah no 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 that water bottle there no the one on the left let me bring that one no not that one the one over there yeah okay good bring that here worse in front of people they will sit there and they will bark orders at their husband and he can't say no because then he looks like a real jerk and he just has to grit his teeth and jump as high as she says to jump it is cruelty beyond cruel demanding of her husband with other people involved you know it's 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 embarrassing him that she's barking orders and then doubly it rubs salt in the wound because he can't do anything about it he is just totally stuck 
and she, she and, and 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 oh, third, third thing, he has to live with the fact everyone knows he has a wife who who doesn't respect him and doesn't treat him well. So it's like a triple whammy for this guy. And I see it everywhere I go. Bring this. Do that. What, what is he, hired hand? I want to say, um, excuse me, miss, um, excuse me. I didn't really, uh, does your husband work for you? Do, do you pay him a salary for him, to treat him that way? I, I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit harsh, but if, if you're one of these people, I hope no, all our listeners are wonderful, so forget it. No, but I'm just saying, curb it. You've got to control yourself. You have to have mm-hmm. more self-mastery than barking out orders to this. is It's so not nice. And, it, you know, the, the, anyway, the, the issue is, and maybe he's barking out orders to you, I hear. Maybe you start repairing it by not barking out orders. No, I don't orders. think either one of us are. That's not my issue. Good. But, but if we go back a second, like, I still, I don't feel like I have clarity. Because on the one hand, you're saying there are certain things he can do, but certain things he can't. But then you're also saying that she's, uh, Kaminsky. her name? Kaminsky. Kaminsky. Mm-hmm said that the men should be helping, but we're not supposed to be asking for help or expecting it. Right. Just in your mind, separate into two separate things. A husband needs to be kind. He needs to do chesed. He needs to be appreciative of his wife. He needs to, you know, he's got a lot of obligations that he has to you. But his obligations to you are not your right to demand of him. Okay. On Fair. your side, okay, on your side, if you recognize that every obligation in the home is 1,000% yours with zero help from him, he's bringing in the blessing of creating the home, okay, not creating the home, the, the, um, the foundation on the home, and he's bringing in blessing in a thousand different ways, and you cannot... Read my lips. You cannot get blessing in this world in any other way besides through your husband. Rav Moshe Cordovero gives over that all bracha comes, all blessing comes from God, from Shemayim, through the husband to the wife. There is no, the clothes you are currently wearing, you might have earned the money from, you might have gone and bought them. The blessing for them comes from God your husband. I get a lot of questions. What if they're divorced? What if you're not married yet? I, 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 those are bigger questions that I can answer. I'm not a great rub. Go fly to Israel. Go talk to somebody, okay? And I actually have talked to a lot of rabbam, a big rabbam about this. I, I get different varying answers. Suffice it to say, it could be that the divorced woman, her a future beshared, it could be the a, a, a single girl's future beshared husband is what the blessings coming through him. It could be on her own merit. I, I've gotten lots of answers. But for you, you're married, you have to know there is no blessing that comes in your life except from your husband, and that is it. Expecting him to also, you know, manage the household, that is, that, that is not the correct way. That is not the way that is okay. part of our Masora so, or I'm that's going to make you like, happy. Let me give you a practical scenario, okay? okay? You know, I, I don't know. It's seven in the morning he's home he's upstairs resting i've got one kid crying throwing a tantrum one kid that has to get out of school on time another kid that won't wake up or whatever i don't know and i can be organized and i can do everything the night before that i need to do like i, I know all those things but sometimes this doesn't happen every day but sometimes like things are chaotic and things don't go right and so I understand I shouldn't have the expectation that he helps, but just like, you know, if his secretary calls in sick and cancels and he's overwhelmed at work because I love him and care about him and want to help him, I will say, can I come in and help you? I will do whatever I need. Like I'll make phone calls for you from home or whatever you need. So then I feel like if he sees that I'm drowning, Okay, I understand me not having the expectation and me not getting angry if he doesn't help, but it would mean a lot to me if he would come and help. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so weird. Talk about Bashard and craziness, but um, my sister, who who is a facilitator of your group, 
um, actually sent me a voice note yesterday, and meaning, I was like, a facilitator of a group, meaning she teaches marriage secrets. So she, correct. She, this book in in, uh, in the Brooklyn. East Coast, in Brooklyn. And um, so she's been doing it for over a year now, mm -hmm. and she voice noted me, and I was thinking, wow, she's such a big person, but she had this exact same scenario. Yesterday was, you know, January 1st, so her husband was off, she was ho off, but he had to go somewhere, and he needed, he wanted to switch cars, and she had planned, because she had the day off, she had planned she'd be with her baby, she has a six-month-old, and she has a daughter who's off from school, who's three years old, and, but she had also planned a, she does, um, on the side, she does uh, personal training, so she had taken a personal training client at 9.15. So she basically had to get her son ready, her daughter ready, herself ready, okay? Mm -hmm. Plus make sure he had the car, the other car. And she's doing all this in, in the morning, sitting in the morning, getting it all done. She's literally pumping so that she can have everything set up. And her daughter's running around. And her husband is literally walking around doing nothing, watching all this happening, her pumping, the baby by her side, her little daughter running, knowing she has an I-15. And he walks in and says, where's the car? I need the car. Like, you want me to switch the cars, but where's the keys? And she says, I don't know where the keys are. I think it's, and he's like, I don't see it. And then he gets all frustrated because he can't find the keys. And she had given it. And does she have your permission to? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. She very much feels okay. that it's, okay. you know, okay. and she got, it's so powerful. It shows her power and what mm -hmm. she's gained mm -hmm. from that. But she's, and, and he got all frustrated and he says, okay, you know what? I'm just leaving. I'll, you know, I, I can't deal with this right now. And he, mm -hmm. he leaves. And she said to me, I was sitting there thinking to myself, are you kidding me? There's so much I'm doing here. I've got things going on in the kid and don't you see what's happening? And she says, I remembered what Leah kept saying. They're, men are not the same creatures as we are. We would walk into a situation like that, see the picture and be like, okay, let me take that kid. Let me help you get her dressed. Let me, what else do you need? What, what can I do with the baby? We automatically go into that. A man, role. correct. Mm -hmm. A man, if you're not asking him directly, and she said, I made a mistake. I didn't say, hi, do you mind? I really could use your help with, you know, if you can get her dress, it'd be really helpful for me. She said, I didn't say anything. I expected him to... Into it. In, into it, to understand mm -hmm. it. And she said, she stopped herself and she said, we can either have today go bad and have a bad day together where he's going to be upset while he's away. I'm going to be upset. It's just going to brew. Or I could decide no. And she says, and you know what? I even made him lunch the night before. So he had lunch that he forgot to take because he was so frustrated when he walked out. Mm. So she texted him. She said, oh, you know what? I found where the keys are because, you know, she went and found it. So I found the keys and you forgot your lunch. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it was like a little hairy this morning. And he wrote her back and he said, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. I'm going to come back. And he goes, and thank you so much. Like, I'm really sorry that I just walked out. And he completely, Aww. like, given. And she said to me, she said, it was such a moment where I had to sit there and think, what do I want of today to be? Because I can make this go really bad. And I said to her, I said, you are on such a high level because I would not do that. I would be literally would have turned, even today, with all that the work that I've done, <laughs> I would have turned to my husband and said, are, are you out of your mind? Do you not see? Do I have to, like, say everything to you? Right. There's a million things going on and you're like, da 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 da, -da I'm going to leave now? These are your children. We're both part of this. This is like two of us in here. Mm -hmm. It's not just one. We're both in this. If you see your child needs help, you're just as invested. You need to do something. It's a very powerful thing, and you talk about it. It's a very hard level to get to, but... Well, the issue... So t tell tell her, Yeshiko. That's what Fantastic I said. I said job. yeah. Like Fantastic beyond. job, beyond, beyond. <laughs> but here's the thing that is so gorgeous. When she is appreciating who he is and what his role is, that's all the difference. Right. When, when you understand that your husband's the source of bracha, and like she says, you know, I would pitch in if he would pitch in. I mean, right. if, if, if he needed me, I would pitch in. How come he doesn't pitch in? When, Cause they're not made that way. They don't. But are you allowed to ask? That's, so what I'm now we're, that's for. what we're getting to now. We're going to get to the practical well, aspects of it. I love that story. Like I'm putting myself in those shoes cause I've had things like that happen all the time. Yeah. So, she if he didn't, didn't have to rush out somewhere. She didn't get out. angry though. That's where she's a right. hero. Right. That's where you can visualize 
10,000 angels singing, standing up and giving her a standing ovation and singing a song and said, oh my goodness, wow. I mean, we tested her. We made this kid scream. You know, God is sitting. Mm-hmm. You know, I made her scream. I made this one yell. That one couldn't get up. That one wouldn't go out. Look how she behaved. OMG, you think that all that mess that was going on in her house was by coincidence? No, it was Hashem hewing her into an extraordinary woman. She could not have, ex- have, have ex- that, that expression of her greatness and her magnanimity could not have happened if she had had an easy morning. Yeah, and she felt so proud of it, and mm. she also said, which was so profound. I hope she's listening. Yeah, no, and she also. I wish. I really yeah, hope yeah. she is. But yeah. they all. She also said, which was so profound, was she said, "You know what I realized? I did not ask. Meaning, I didn't at any point say to him, and in a nice way, say to him." Oh my gosh, you know what? I know you're rushing. If it'd be it'd be so amazing for me if you could just get, you know, my the my daughter dressed. Like if you just get her dressed, it would make like the biggest difference in life. Is that okay? Could you do that? Like she herself came to that saying of I expected him to see the situation and to step up to the plate, and he didn't. And so then she's her, her expectations through the roof, and That's then she, she goes to anger. You, we That's immediately it. go to anger, and the story is over. The minute you go to anger, then every you're collecting evidence against them of what they did wrong. And then where's closeness? Where's closeness? Now I want to take, let's talk, take this very practical. So can I just ask you, Tanya? Do you do you now or have you ever had a two year old? I know the answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> so now let me ask you for your two year old. Was your two-year-old, maybe you have a precocious two-year-old, but was your two-year-old able to sh- tie their own shoelaces? No. Okay. I mean, probably you had Velcro. Everyone's got Velcro. Shoelaces. Who has shell? Okay, but let's say they had shoelaces. They would not be able to tie their shoelaces. So when they couldn't tie their shoelaces, what would you do? I would tie it for them. There you go. You would tie it for them. And now, if they, as they progressed and they got older, right, and you were, they, they're now five, and you're still tying their shoelaces. At what point do you say, okay, it's time for you to try, tie your own shoelaces? Right. You mean, maybe yeah, four, you mean, uh, maybe five years old, yeah. right? So how yeah. do you teach them how to tie their shoelaces? Do you let them trip on their shoelaces a, a, a lot and then scream your head off at them, how mad you are at them for not having tied shoelaces? No. Right. What do you do? You get them excited about it. You, you know, I don't know. I can't remember what I did. But <laughs> teach them, you know, in ways that they can hear. Right. And you do it Practice. slowly. Right. Practical. You show them. You go through when you show the tie, you, you know, whatever. You have this, how do you go this little, and the bunny goes around the tree and it goes through the, ha- does anyone know that rhyme? Yeah. You must know that rhyme. No. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about how you tie the shoelaces. So you go through this with a kid. You, you. Ease them into it. You, if 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 the, let's say you taught them to tie their shoelaces, and they had taught their, tied their shoelaces ten times, and now you're going to be late to the, you're going to Disneyland, and everyone's going to be late, and they're all waiting for them, and they're like, <laughs> then you tie their shoelace for them, you know, whatever it is, you ease them into it in a way that they can macabre, that they can, how do you say macabre, macabre, accept, accept that mm-hmm. they can accept it with a full heart. So this is the same thing. We expect from our husbands to do, to do, to do, and, you know, right away they should, you know, jump in. They're not going to jump in. We need to, we, we are the Azer Conegdo. We are the, uh, the helper, helpmate against them to teach them and to show them whatever, but we're, we have to do it in a way that they can hear. So that's with the two-year-old. That's with, I'm not caught by any, don't, someone don't take this out of context and say, oh, she thinks men are two-year-olds. No, but I'm just saying, what I'm saying, no, they're not, <laughs> but that, that's, sorry, uh, that, we're, uh, that, that skill that we have of easing in and understanding where they're coming from and whatever, we are so busy being angry that it's not fair or they're not pitching in or they're not coming to our rescue that we don't have any time to think about and pause a minute and say, what's the best way to get my husband to help clean the dishes off? You know, 
maybe like, hey, you know, I was thinking we, you know, maybe we take walks after dinner. Good luck with this. Uh, maybe we take walks <laughs> after dinner. You know, be, do you mind just bringing these dishes into the sink? See, if if your husband is bringing the sinks, the t- dishes up into the sink because you are wagging your finger at him or because he should or because um, uh, uh, that, you know, that that's just an expectation, like, come on, you know, or whatever. Or he knows you're going to have a chip on your shoulder or give him the cold shoulder or, uh, you know, something like that. If he's doing it under duress, basically, it's not an act of chesed. It's an act right. of aggravation. Mm-hmm. If he is doing it and he gets this ginormous reward of your appreciation... Not because you expect it, but because he's doing it as a chesed. And this is what the Rebbitson said. She said, it's not his obligation. It's your obligation. Yes, he should do it. Yes, he should help. But when he does it as a gift to you, rather than you expecting it and demanding it, that's where harmony is. And that's what we want to go for. I want to share with you very quickly a little uh, 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 a, um, a report that came out. I, I know... Reports, look, research, researchers can sort of cherry pick their um, uh, data and whatever. I did have somebody who I know who's a statistician look at this to see whether it's true. And it seems like it's a fairly good study with a fairly good outcome. Uh, you know, uh, the results seem to match what it is. But I want to share it with you because, you know, you can sit here and listen to me all day long about, oh, this is our Masora, this is our tradition, this is, you know, whatever – and that is that should be enough. But there might be a wiggling part of you in the background. Well, maybe Leia's misinterpreting it, or maybe it was given over in a way that we didn't understand. Okay, I, I can buy all that. When you come down to hard science, though, how does it play out in the real world? You know, I think that is that's sometimes helpful. I'm doing a very bad job of undermining. I don't mean to undermine the Torah at all. I'm just saying this bolsters what the Torah has mm-hmm. been saying for 3,000 years. That's what I meant to say. Okay, fine. So this is a study uh, from the Telegraph in the UK, and it says couples who share the housework are more likely to divorce study finds. It, in what appears to be a slap in the face for gender, gender equality, the report found the divorce rate among couples who shared housework equally was around 50% higher than among those where the woman did most of the work. So that's pretty stinging. So it's a 50% higher divorce rate. That's shocking. So even if they're half wrong and it's you know 2%, 10%, whatever more, it's, it's, it's a shocking bit of data. Now... It could be that the type of people who would say, you know, let's do housework equally are busy calculating. Maybe that's why it doesn't work. But the bottom line is the households where it's shared equally have a 50% higher divorce rate. Something to think about when you are calculating, okay, whose job is it? You're standing there. Let's go back. Tanya, you're standing there in the morning and you're having this crazy, crazy morning. What are some of the uh, some options that you can do from what based on what we've said so far today? Well, I think the biggest piece for me is, and I, I, it's hard for me to fully buy this, but I think the biggest piece for me is like none of this is his responsibility. This is my responsibility. Um, I think that's a big piece. I think the second piece is understanding that even if he's not helping in the moment in the way that maybe I would like him to into it and do that he's helping in a hundred other ways that I can't see or recognize in the moment or maybe ever. I think that's fit as well. Um, Right. And also, yeah, yeah. remember what you're going to say, but also remember the first part where you're saying, you know, this is my obligation or whatever. There's a part of all of us that feel like, like, like really it, it's all on me. Like it's all on me. All that is feels unfair. And the way to get over that feeling is the, um, let me just think for a sec. Cause I'm just thinking when, when, you know, cause I worked with single people so long who just pined. They, I mean, I, I saw, unfortunately I saw so many tears 
of single people. Like I, I just want, I just want somebody. You know, I would do everything. I would, I just want them to be in the house. You know, just show up, just be there, just sit at the table. I'll do everything for you. I'll do the laundry. I'll take care of every little need you have. Just love me. Just love me. I just want Leia. Why can't I have somebody just love me? Everybody has somebody loves them. Why can't I have just just that? Dayenu, that's it. Just I just want somebody who loves me. I've seen so many so many women just suffering without that. And I'm saying, if you get to a place and you just feel, oh, it's not fair, just don't go down that tunnel because that's expectations. Like the Rebbe says, said, Rebbeson said, you get you go to expectations, and the minute you go to expectations, you go to anger and you go to lack of appreciation of what they're bringing to the party and again you you you, you're never going to see it you know you you, we don't know that just on a spiritual level we don't know what they're bringing um okay what was the other thing you were going to say yeah and i just i still don't have 100 percent clarity on you know even take your sister's example like what would be okay to ask because initially you said there it's only okay to ask like is it only okay to ask if it's something for the child because that's a chesed, but it's not okay to ask if it's something for the house? I think that's where the like, Rebbitson was good getting to, uh, and I think that basically manage what you're going to ask. I think that your, your husband, if you if you really are taking on 100%, right, where it belongs, and you are grateful for what he's doing really you can work that up in yourself i mean if you can if you can get yourself in a place where you really feel like this is it's on me and everything he does is a gift if you get yourself to that place he will do more because you'll be coming from this place of just total rewarding and showering him with appreciation and that is will hopefully be addictive for him it's like teaching that two-year-old to tie their shoe you know you're you're rewarding like oh good job you know there are it's it's kind of using your beanie of Sarah, your your women's intuition to figure out what is going to work with this man. He's not going to be able to multitask like a woman. He's not going to step in. Your, your sister walks through the house. She's like, oh, yeah, you want me to do these? I'll do this pile of dishes. You do that one. Da, da, da. You know, I mean, it's just it's just a different ball game. And to expect him to be a woman, you wouldn't. Would you want to be married to you, you know a, a woman who who d- doesn't have the the um, there are things that we get from a man that we can't see. There, there's a man is more like a rock and a woman is more like a butterfly. And that rockness of a man allows us to be a butterfly and fly, fl- float around. If you, you know, we, I speak with the single moms and it's, it's, it, it's not just the pain of dealing with the emotions of the children and the, the, um, the drama that may have taken place in their lives and the trauma and the post-traumatic stress disorder and all those other issues. That's huge in and of itself. But what's, even a deeper spiritual issue is there's no rock. And understanding what that rock provides for us is would do a world of good to help us to to take on our avodas, our work. It's hard work. It's physical labor. It's like you said, it, it, it much easier to f- go off to work. A lot, a couple of the emails that came in. Le- Leia, are you joking? I would. I'm a stay-at-home mom by choice because I feel like it's better for my kids. But it's much easier. I one lady, I think she was a graphic designer or something like that, and she said it was fun. It was creative. I was going from one creative meeting into the next. You know, colors, schemes, you know, whatever. And now I'm there and I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing my tenth diaper. No, nothing gets. You know, it just, uh, she called it Groundhog Day, you know, like where it's the same day mm-hmm. every day. Uh, there's a reference mm-hmm. on a movie or something mm-hmm. like that, I think, mm-hmm. that she's talking about. Uh, uh, but but she's saying that it's just the same, the same, the same. We, and that is such a tragedy that that's what's been, that's what has come out of the women's movement, which I'm, I'm a, you know, women's advocate and everything like that. But there are some some concepts that came out of it that took out the glory of a woman's work. And, uh, you know... Uh, look, I'm like the next guy. I'd, 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 I'm glad I have a dishwasher. You know, it's it, it's uh, her name is Betsy. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, we we are. It's it's um, there are a lot of issues there to unfold. But the basic thing that I'm saying right now is that if a woman has it on her shoulders, and her husband gets to do stuff out of chesed rather than out of obligation and out of being demanded and out of being, he's going to get the silent treatment if he doesn't help do the dishes. That's that's ancient history. That you that's got to carve its way out of the the marriage and uh, 
Uh, and I think you will find that there's a lot more closeness and a lot more pleasure in the marriage, even though you're doing more dishes. I get it. I get it. That, but that the cost of doing more dishes is that you get closeness with your husband and that intimacy and appreciation and, and uh, uh, that, that you, a lot of us are pining for and craving. Deeply, deeply craving. Yeah, and eventually with bringing all that blessing in your house, you'll get multiple dishwashers and housekeepers <laughs> and everything else that comes with it. There you and go. And you won't there be doing go. the dishes there anymore, right? Like that story that you said, which I, I thought was so profound, that woman that you said who said, you know, when they were poor, she said, I'm not going to have my husband do diapers. That was what she took upon herself. And the message was, I'm going to put peace first. And now she's in a mansion and, and she sees very much the blessing mm -hmm. because there is... When you do it a certain way, you do definitely, you know, there's that sort of Right. And one harmonies. of the things I have to say, and I do have to throw this bottle. Ah! <laughs> not you at me. Not at me. Not at me. I'm ducking. I'm ducking. Oh, my God. I'm ducking. Noise. We need a crash Yeah. Noise. No, I'm ducking. Woo! Okay. okay there we go. Yo, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what the, one of the things that I said last week, and I reported it back to this uh, big rub, uh, um, who I don't want to keep quoting him because it's, it's not so, you know, I don't know. I don't want him to get called or whatever. <laughs> but one of the things I, I said last week was that, what the, one of the greatest, greatest gifts that a woman gives to her husband is providing menucha in the home, mm -hmm. peace in the serenity in the home. That, yeah, he's doing nothing, and you're sitting there doing the dishes, and you're, you know, whatever. And I, I thought that was hysterical when I said, well, you know, during the birthday party, you were just providing for everyone. And she says, no, I was sitting down. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. So she's 1% of the population that can sit down in the, in the, during the birthday party. But I'm just saying, I mean, maybe a lot of people can, I don't know, but I'm just saying there is a, a, a providing of space that a woman can do of a serenity and a manucha. And a, how do you translate manucha? Yeah, serenity. I think serenity. it's really okay. such a good it's word. Just a yeah. level of serenity in the home that is, he's not constantly scared. Oh, what you're going to ask me to do? You know, when the husband comes through the door and he like goes to his little thing, like, uh, Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill. Oh, he must be in the garage, Bill. And then he's locked in the bathroom, looking, yeah. checking his emails. You know, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad. He yeah. doesn't have a home yeah. that he can feel safe. But isn't that anyway, the rabbi, I was going to say, the rabbi said, uh, he said, spot on, uh, mm -hmm. one of the top 10 things a wife gives for her husband is that menucha. Okay, yeah, no, and, and, that's, and that's funny because whenever I think of back, okay, not even going back as far back as our great, great, great grandmothers or, you know, our imahos, you know, the, the, the mothers, our mothers from back in the day of Abraham and Abraham and, and Sarah, but even going back in the day, a couple of many years back, but when your typical home setting was this wife with her apron on being so happy to have the dinner made when her husband walked in the and door. And then they said that was oppressed. No, and, you're oppressed. And no, no, you don't understand. And then seeing the husband and he'd be with his newspaper and he'd put on his slippers and he, the and they, slippers. and, and you know what? They were very happy. There was a, like this, like everyone knew their roles. Like the wife knew what her role is. The husband had, they had their roles and they each worked inside that role. And mm -hmm. we've become so, we've gone so far away from that. And I think that's what your book and what the Torah is saying is try to get back a little bit towards that sort of having a little bit more defined roles of you're the homemaker and you're, you know, the the one taking care of the kids and, and that's sort of your domain. And he's, I find it even with my husband, he comes home and yes, he's done with work. But his mind doesn't shut down, and he's thinking about all the stuff, and he's also thinking about all the pressures of all the bills and everything he has mm -hmm. to take care of. And I could see it. I could see how his mind is going. And for mm -hmm. him to sit there and start yeah. doing things with the kids, he can't even. He's so still in wrapped up in that world because that is his. To take care of yeah, you. Yeah, it's a huge responsibility. You. And yeah, yeah and, it, yeah, and it, look, it gets a little bit complicated when the when the wife is also working full time. I get it. I, these are, you know, it's not like they're hard and fast rules, and you have to do what works for you. And I have a lot of um, a sympathy for the the stress that we're all under. I, I, I totally get it. Now I'm saying, oh, on you need to do all the dishes too. I'm not saying mm. you need to do all the dishes. I'm saying what our masora is. It's on you. And you have to use your Bina Yisera, you have to use your, your women's intuition and how to get help from your husband in the kindliest way possible. And that starts by thinking of it as your obligation to take care of. If you start in any other place, you just can't get to that kind-hearted way of 
training him and teaching him and, and growing him into who you want him to be because you're just demanding. You know, no matter how you slice it, you're demanding. So the easiest way to get to point B is to heap everything onto yourself and say, I'm responsible. And then just naturally the appreciation will come out when he does even the smallest little bit of things. And there, there are men who, who might hear this and think, oh, good, I'm off the hook. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're talking man, to this is women. not a show for you. Do not, right? listen. Do not listen. <laughs> if I were talking to a man, I would say, you get your get off the, yeah. your, yeah. your yeah. rump and go and help with the dishes, okay? Yeah. That's what I would say. It's no, not- but you're telling me that women, men should not be doing that. No, no, no. She's telling Women you not, the not men. demand it. The men should be doing it, but that's no, none of your. Impressed? That's but you told me on our last conversation that I should never let my husband do that. Is that just for me? Okay, that was just for you. Basically, okay. what I was doing with you in our last conversation, a private conversation, I gave her the homework, which I, I don't know if I'm going to give that to everybody. It's too head, but I head trippy. I gave her the homework of never. She 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 basically was saying this and you know not barking like she's a very lovely person. She wasn't barking <laughs> like some people I hear are barking at their husbands. But she was just giving one okay if he finished the trash then okay and also bring the and I'll, you know she was just basically giving him lists of what he needed to be doing that day. So I told her your job for the next week, and we'll see if it goes to two weeks. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Um, your job for the next week is to zip your lift and not make one request of your husband. And I'm sure her husband had the best week of his life this last week. Did you notice any difference in your husband? No, I did not. Interesting. Yeah, you may need another week. <laughs> no, her husband may need another yeah, week yeah. before he feel, exactly. he, before he feels it's real. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. basically, her pendulum was way over here of right. barking orders. So I wanted her over here so they could get somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Now it is the husband's obligation out of chesed, not because he's obligated to do the household things, but because doing a kindness for a fellow person, his wife especially, who he has a lot of hakar satov to, a lot of uh, appreciation for, um, you know, a husband should do it. But when it comes from the wife demanding it, mm -mm, that's where the problem starts. That's where the expectations start. That's where the anger comes from. And that's where you have this constant tension in the household of demanding he act in a certain way. And that's where the problem starts. And Leah, we have a Facebook um, viewer who commented, by the way, guys, we love your comments and we love the repeat customers. So keep coming back on. Um, NL said, I think that's a great distinction, doing these things for the sake of peace and not for the sake of the actual thing. Like not having a husband ever doing a diaper is not the point. The focus on peace is the point, and that can look a little different for different people in combos. So for everyone. Fantastic. Yeah. And the very nice wrap-up. Okay, we have time yeah. for one more question, Tanya, and then we're going we're gonna to give our homework. Um, I don't know if I have a question right now. I'm still okay. thinking. So oh, my gosh. You know what? Homework. We forgot that other letter. Ay, ay, ay. Remember? Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I think, hold on. Yeah. Because I, I told, I emailed back and said, oh, we'll answer it on the show. Hold on a second. Let me just, I, I, yeah, because okay. I think you're, you're, okay. we're at our time. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me just see if I can just, um, uh, maybe it'll be, uh, I, 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 mm, I feel like you aren't treating, oh, I feel like you aren't treating stay at home moms with the same equality that you do working moms, yet you want working women to be treated the same as, why shouldn't a stay at home mom be respected the same as someone who works outside the house? I, I'm saying just the opposite. Women who stay at home and have all the frazzled, you know, I, I'm not saying they should be more respected. I mean, they're, I'm not making any distinction. So any, if I apologize if, if I've given over that impression in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm high, highest regard for all women, I mean, who deserve it, <laughs> or those who don't. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But, I, you know, so, no, I don't yeah, make a distinction. Maybe read that quickly because I think you have, like, a minute or two, and then there's the least people. Well, no, look how long it is. Oh, it's- yeah. <laughs> Um, oh so the, the point is, it says, um, doing chores and bedtime together is a great pleasure, which the husbands like because to do, because they're giving to their wives and that makes their wives happy. Isn't that, which is what they are created for. So it is what they are created for, but it, it I don't know where exactly she got the idea that, that, that people love doing that. Um, <laughs> I don't think the men, if you were to ask the men, would you like to, you know, clean the house with your wife or would you like to sit and read a newspaper or do whatever, you know, there's, there's no question. So, 
um, I, I think that's kind of the, the main thing, I think, for the person who wrote the letter, and if you're, I, I think she's probably listening, is that you're, be, you're taking on the 100% responsibility for, for the household, and then anything he does, you show appreciation. I think that would be your number one way to get your husband both on board with helping more and give you a level of peace in the home because your husband has peace in the home. When your husband is safe, you will be feel more safe. There'll be more calmness in the home. There'll be more togetherness in the home, even though it doesn't look like it's equal. So did that answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that answer is exactly the thing. I think that what you just said, how what, what, what would make someone think that their husband would want to do the same thing? A lot of women do feel as though, well, we're both... We both gave birth to these children, mm-hmm. and we both they're both of ours. We right. would feel equal amount of appreciation and joy out of taking care of them, but there's a reason why God gave the right. commandment to the men to have children and not to the women, because he knew women would do it naturally, and men need to be a little bit convinced they don't have the same joy and feeling. They love it, and they do have a joy, and they have their own sense of joy with their right. children, but they don't feel the same way as sitting there and taking care of the basics are not as, as enjoyable. Right, enjoyable, yeah. exactly. I mean, not that they're enjoyable for us, too, and some women hate right. housework and some people <laughs> like it, whatever, right. but, but I'm just saying that yeah. understanding yeah. understanding that um, uh, that it shouldn't, that, that they... It's not that, a given. That, yeah, it's not a given, and that your obligation, you know, if you just take that on, I, you know, you will see that there's a level of chesed that your husband will step up to, God willing. It might take. In my, she's been doing a week. You, you know, it takes time. Make yeah. take a few months or whatever. But the bottom line of this entire show is that if you go for shalom in the home, all blessing will come pouring into your house. And part of that is just doing things. You know, that maybe you know, doing a lot of diapers. You know, that you feel like he should be doing. Um, try it on. Try it again. This is a try this at home. We'd love your comments, your emails. Keep them coming. And I'm gonna give the homework. The homework for oh, I do that separately, right? Or do no, 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 no. Yeah, you do it in the video. Okay. Do it after. So the homework for this week for those of you who can tolerate can what is it? Don't, if you don't like the heat, stay out of yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So we're in the kitchen now, and what the homework is is one time this week when you're about to open your mouth and make a command of your husband, just do it yourself. One time. Can yeah, do that? I like okay. that one time. And Tanya, come back, please. Yeah, we'd love hear to hear your you. feedback. You are fantastic. Tanya, thank you very much for being on the show. This is the Ladies Talk Show with your host, Leah Richheimer. We'll see you next week.